The breast are composed of several types of tissues. Fatty tissue creates shape, connective tissue and suspensory ligaments provide support, while glandular tissue and milk ducts function during milk production. The mammary glands are divided into units called lobes, and each lobe is comprised of many smaller lobules that can produce milk. Milk ducts connect the lobules to the nipple, where the milk exits when the woman is lactating. A network of blood vessels supply blood to the breast, providing cells and oxygen and nutrients. Lymph, a fluid that surrounds the cells and help eliminate cellular waste and fight infections, also circulates through the breast. Lymph is transported from the breast through a series of lymph vessels that lead to 10 filtering organs known as lymph nodes. Lymph nodes that drain the breast tissues are found in clusters in the underarm region and near the collarbone. They are important in understanding breast cancer because lymph nodes are some of the first sites where cancer spreads. Unlike blood vessels, they can serve as vessels through which cancer cells can travel to other areas of the body. Breast cancer, like all cancers, results from changes called mutation in a cell genetic material DNA that leads to unregulated cell growth and division instead of a normal cell process where cells grow, divide, and die off when they become older or damaged. Cells with certain mutation behave abnormally rather than dying off when they should, they keep multiplying. The excessive growth can form masses known as tumors, which can either be benign or malignant. Benign tumors generally grow slower than malignant tumors. They have more normal characteristics and tend not to invade other tissues. Since benign tumors do not spread, they are not considered cancerous. Malignant tumors are cancer. These tumors are characterized by cells with uncontrolled rapid growth and division that can spread from the tumor site and invade and harm other tissues. Breast cancer, also known as carcinoma, is a general term for various types of malignant tumors that originate in the breast. There are two main types of breast cancer. The most common form starts in the ducts and is called ductocarcinoma. The second type is known as lobular carcinoma since it begins in the lobules. When malignant cells form in ducts or lobules but have not invaded the surrounding tissue, the tumor are referred to as non-invasive tumor. These masses are also called carcinoma in situ, a name that is referred to a Latin phrase that means in position. Lobular carcinoma in situ is often referred to as LCIS or lobular neoplasia. Although LCIS has the word carcinoma in it, it has a low risk of progressing to invasive disease. It's commonly thought of a risk factor for developing breast cancer. Ductal carcinoma in situ DCIS, carries a much higher risk and if untreated could become an invasive form of cancer. Invasive breast cancer spreads from their origin into other breast tissues and possibly to other parts of the body. About 80% of invasive breast cancers start in the ducts and are therefore called invasive ductal carcinomas IDC. Invasive cancers that start in the lobules called invasive lobular carcinoma ILC are accounts for around 10 to 15 percent of invasive breast cancer. Less common forms of breast cancer include tumors that are mixed with both invasive ductal and lobular carcinomas. Inflammatory breast cancer IBC in which cancer has invaded the skin covering the breast and where tumors that originated in the breast connective tissues called sarcomas. Certain factors may increase the risk of developing breast cancer. Gender is the primary risk factor. Breast cancer occurs in women at about a hundred times the way it occurs in males. The chance of developing breast cancer increases with age, previous breast cancer, a family history of breast cancer, and specific gene mutations that increases the risk of both breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Women who are Caucasians are diagnosed more often than other ethnicities. Those who started menstruation early, went through menopause late, had their first child after the age of 30, or never had children, or have increased risks.